Hello everyone. In this video, we will see what are the things to consider before deactivating or deleting a flow. And also finally, we will see how can we deactivate or delete a flow in ServiceNow. If you're liking my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button. First of all, what are the things you should check before deleting or deactivating a flow? Is it being used in some catalog item? So you can go into that catalog item, go under process engine and see if that particular flow is being used there or not. Let me quickly show you how can you find that. I'm in my service now instance. I will go to maintain items and then I will bring on a field using personalized list called flow. This flow actually stores the flow which is being used in this catalog item. So we will quickly take a look. For example, this E separation flow is being used in this catalog item called E separation. Similarly, demo now parallel is being used in the catalog item called test one. So you can search for the flows which you are trying to deactivate or delete are being used in any catalog item or not from here. Secondly, is it being used in some custom application or custom table or in fact any table? So for that you will have to manually search that by going into the condition of the workflow that is the trigger. Let me quickly show you where can we find that trigger. So now for example, I'm on my flow designer screen and I go to this particular flow called do while loop. And if I scroll up here, you see the trigger and now in this you would see this particular flow is being used when an incident is being created. So I know at what point of time this flow will trigger and will it impact my existing process of incident or not. So I need to ensure the same thing for my custom tables or any out of the box tables as well. So these are the few checks which you should be definitely doing before deactivating or deleting a flow. Next is what is the impact on the existing records which are already using that flow when you deactivate or even delete a flow. For that I will show you an example. Let me quickly take you in service now again and here I will open a flow called E separation which was being used in the E separation catalog item as well. I will take you there as well in a minute. So what this flow is doing is it's being triggered on a catalog item and that catalog item name is E separation, which I can see here when I'm using get catalog variables. Now what I will do is I will go to this catalog item. I know this E separation flow is being used here at this place. I will go ahead and create a ticket and I will order this now. So this flow will automatically be attached to this RITM because it is currently active and whatever steps are defined in that flow will automatically run. So let me quickly show you that I'm in the RITM now which was just created and if you see this approval has been triggered which was defined in the flow. So you can see that in the flow context here that it asks for the approval and it is now waiting for the next steps. Now what I will do is for example, I got a requirement guys. We have to remove this flow from this catalog item and we don't need this flow anymore. I will go ahead and deactivate this flow. Now since this flow is deactivated, let's see in the RITM what's the impact. So I am in the RITM again. I will refresh this RITM. So I see here there is no impact on the approval and this is the flow context of that RITM. I will refresh this and there is no impact here and it's still intact. So what I will do is I will check if this flow runs further or not since I deactivated the flow. So I have approved this. I will go back on the RITM. And you see this has been approved and a catalog task has been generated. I'll go back to the context and I will refresh and you see the flow context is still running. So that means 
even if I deactivate the flow, the flow context which is running on the existing RITM or on your existing recalls, any other custom tables or any other out of the box tables, it will still keep running. So once the flow is attached to that record, it doesn't matter whether you delete or deactivate that flow, it will still keep running on the older records. So I will go back into the catalog item. I will go to configure item and here I would see the flow is still appearing here as E separation. So even after I deactivate that it still appears here. So that's okay. Let me try it and create another RITM from here. I will click on order now and let's see if the new flow context attaches to this RITM. I will go to the request. I will scroll down and go to the RITM. And if I scroll down here, you would see there is no flow context. So that means once the flow is deactivated, the flow doesn't attach to the new records. So keep in mind, even when you make a change in the flow, if there is a new version of the flow, all the new records will be referring to the newer version of the flow. And the older records which were created on the older version will refer to the older version of the flow. So please keep all these things in mind before making any changes to the flows. Now, if you have made up your mind that you want to delete a flow, although ServiceNow recommends, please go ahead and deactivate what you don't need. Don't delete data in ServiceNow. But if you are a developer and you want to anyways delete that because it, it's on the lower environment only, it's not in the production. You just created it for your own learning purpose. So here I will show you quickly how you can delete a flow. I'm on my flow designer. I will randomly select any flow. So for example, this is out of the box flows and I want to delete two or three flows or maybe only one. I can check these check boxes in front of the flow which I want to delete. I will click on this drop down and here you can see we have an option of deleting these flows. So you just go ahead and click on delete and it will ask for a confirmation message. Are you sure that you want to delete the flow and other things which are dependent on these flows? If you click on delete those dependent things and the flow itself will be deleted. So this is how you delete a flow. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you learned something new, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also the like button. Let me know in comments if you have any questions and thanks for watching the video.